Old domestic muscle cars with work VSKF scratch an itch that most would not expect. Okay, the blending of two styles that by themselves would only be seen with either tucked in jean shorts or that one Subaru wagon owner post talking shit with the mirror pic of said VSKFs on his shoulder. The combination of the two though is a special zen that can only be matched by an earlier car. A car that had no business being as bitchin' as it was. I'm Alex, Alex R. Martini with two underscores on Instagram and today we're talking about a car that scared every parent, every insurance agent, and every RX-7 owner at the time. A car that changed how people saw Dodge for a very, very brief period of time. A car that answered the call of who will beat these goddamn JDM cars. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about how to modify a Dodge Neon SRT4. Car parts like wheels, coilovers, or exhaust? Mod your car, Martini Works, baby. We started this thing because we give a shit about selling you stuff that actually works. And we absolutely love learning unnecessary shit about cars. And today's specimen is a Dodge Neon SRT4 cruising shirt. Check it out. The Dodge Neon, the official car for people who keep having a tough time with relationships. The turbocharged Neon graced the scene from 2003 to 2005, okay? And was made by Daimler Chrysler's own performance group. Their mission then was the same as now. Build fun as hell and fast as cars and, and trucks, if they want to, that weren't a ton of change. Apparently the PVO had a bee in their bonnet because in this time frame, Dodge aimed to slap a few different models out there just to see how it did, including the Viper SRT10, the Dodge Ram SRT10, and the Dodge SRT4. Touted as the the fastest production car in the United States for less than $21,000, it was not a slouch. And the story of the car was just as ridiculous as the Viper as well. Tom Gale be out here slapping shit together just because he can. The same guy who built the Viper with a team of people that got paid like shit but didn't care because the car was dope, put together another team with the same exact mentality after a quick trip to SEMA to realize that everyone had their pinkies out for tuner cars. Gale wanted a piece of that action, he brought together a fleet of people, and in just four months built a two liter supercharged SRT4 that came out to 208 horsepower. Power. It immediately got denied. And we didn't see it all in action for like a couple, two, three years. But it was eventually granted approval. And what we got was a 2.4 liter gas engine, new venture gear, five speed with equal length half shafts, and a clutch that feels like an aftermarket one from stock and no muffler. Outside from its genuinely kind of funky slash ugly exterior, though, we got the SRT tuned Tokiko struts, some rear sway bars, upgrading steering knuckles, and vented brakes. The Dodge Neon SRT4. The official car for kids who learn how to gaslight from their parents. The interior of these cars were terrible to look at when they were new and absolutely no better 18 years later, but it does not matter, okay? The cue ball shifter feels like gas and the aluminum floor pedals are sick. And this car had a boost cage from factory. What? The coolest part of the car was its gauges, in all honesty, and that's pretty much about it. In 2004, the car got a better limited slip differential, better injectors, a new ECU, but kind of worse tires. So get a newer one if you want to buy one. So how do you modify this absolutely unnecessary, completely overwhelming domestic tuner car, aka the SRT4? Well, let's get into it. The SRT4, the official car for adults who peaked in high school. The SRT4 is the kind of car that had the original burbles. Skittles used to run up and down the streets of Eau Claire where I lived, and the pop would set off alarms when I was hanging down there having a good old margarita. And I swear to God, it was the best damn sound ever, and it came from a stock exhaust. The only thing to remember is that these cars are a bear to drive. If the wheels aren't straight, you're spinning. If you don't have the updated LSD, you're spinning. If you have crummy tires, guess what, chief? Spinning. And if there's only one person in the car and they're sitting directly behind you and the weight is like on the left, you're spinning. The SRT4, the official car for people whose parents were domestic car enthusiasts. The SRT4 needs a few things above quite literally everything else. Number one, coilovers. SC coilovers are like $1,400. You can get them from us. And they're gonna help with controlling the weight transfer, especially in the front, okay? Specific dampers help this platform a ton because the weight shift can be so exaggerated that without good coilovers, you'll just make a bunch of smoke, which is cool the first time, but not the 20th. Number two, sway bars. The car has the same elements as a Honda or Acura at the time. Front wheel drive, horsepower, and fun as hell, except the SRT4 for is like a monkey in a cage on top of a giraffe scared for its life. It's just a little bit tougher to get all running in the right direction. So sway bars with a tighten up coilover kit will make this car feel leagues better. I think the stock wheels are cool, but extremely boring looking. Mesh style wheels look great. And although it's not gonna help you with controlling the car much, you can pair up some new tires with it from Martini Works because we're the best thing since sliced bread. And those tires will help you a bunch depending on what you're doing. I recommend the Continental ECS02 in a 225 45 size and a 17 by eight plus 40 or 18 by eight 
plus 35 wheel. Wheels that I think look great on this car are the Enki Ryzen, the Koenig Countergram, or even the Hypergram. And if you're big money, different tax bracket, BBS CIR. Most people buy a lot of reps on this platform, which is fine, but it's mostly due to really shitty fitment that these cars have a tendency to have, which narrowed down the ability to run cool wheels because nobody makes the sizes anymore. Now, from there, jump into an oil catch can, upper hard pipe, an HKS sequential blow off valve for all the noises, a Mishimoto intercooler, an AEM intake, and a tunable ECU. Pick your favorite here. Okay, for an exhaust, Borla has a cap back that has just the right amount of dear God help me, and hey, my parents shouldn't judge me when I go to Thanksgiving. And here, you can kind of just go with new motor mounts because they're probably absolutely trashed. Get some new plug wires, and then from there, begin preparing to tell everyone you know that you don't own a Dodge Neon, you own an SRT4. The SRT4, the official car for people who debated on this one versus the Caliper, and you're still not entirely sure if you bought the right one. The Dodge SRT4 is truly a trip down memory lane. The mods on these cars hurt. Like the style that these cars in 2005, they kind of just got stuck there and never really came back. And this was back when Dodge was doing Dodge things, but without the best marketing behind them. So some of the platform feels a little tacky. So that might mean you're gonna skip this car and go pick up a first gen BRZ instead. Pump your brakes. What we need to do is make sure that what you're actually about to buy is what you want because it can either be the best car you buy ever or a giant piece of poo, okay? Do you want a car that is gonna give you the biggest smile on your face but have absolutely zero concept of functional use and balance? Buy the SRT4. Do you want a car that is probably a steal because it still has the same mods from 18 years ago and is just looking to be put out to pasture but you and I both know that you won't do that? Buy the SRT4. Do you want a car that will make so much goddamn noise that only the people in the car are gonna love it whereas the rest of the world is gonna just wish you were never a thought in your dad's eye? Buy the SRT4. So how do you modify a Dodge Neon slash not Neon SRT4? Easy, you don't tell people it's a Neon and you go on the hunt for a low mileage one. You immediately realize they're gonna be spending $10,000 on a 130 mile car with fender rust, but it makes the best sound you've ever heard of in your life, so it doesn't matter. From there, tell your insurance you did buy a Neon and then pray they don't look at the badges. You're well on your way to being a car enthusiast, but not before spending like four grand on mods. 3,000 of it, pretty much only coilovers and wheels and tires. The rest of the parts for this car are all surprisingly affordable. From there, you're gonna realize that the squeaks on the inside aren't from mods, that's just how Dodge built the car, and you are not going to give a single flying f because you will still wanna race absolutely anything with two doors or a sports badge, and for the most part, you are going to win the Dodge Neon SRT4, the official car of those people who stand near the terminal even when their group number isn't called because they're trying to get on the airplane before everybody else. Why? There's no point. The SRT4 is a car that sits in such a weird spot for most people. Old enough where clean examples are way too much, but commonly sold enough to where they're a budget pickup right next to a Bug Eye WRX. They modify well, but their styling is a little bit to be desired. But with the right mods and a clean buff, these cars can be a ton of fun. They're easy to work on, available enough to have universal parts work on them, and are a damn blast to drive. But most importantly, if you're looking to buy some parts for one, mod your car at Martini Works. I'm Alex Martini. If you have tips for a fellow SRT owner, drop them below. And if you have one already built, add it to our build threads at Martini Works. Let us know what car we should do next. Adios.